what's up y'all and welcome back to another installment of what y'all talking about and this topic today has had me in my feelings <laughs> and i just wanted to uh share my thoughts on it um maybe you've seen the video maybe you haven't but um let's get into it so a popular social media influencer um known to everybody that you know knows her um the, the name watch jazzy and she was on a podcast or whatever being interviewed and she was talking about being a submissive woman and we all know that that word just is a trigger for a lot of people and um during this conversation she was talking about all the things that she does for her man what does that mean you know like packing his bag unpacking his bag <laughs> um just making sure all the things that he wants and like I, I pretty much read his mind so it's like if i know you and i study you like i know how you are in the morning i know how you are about midday i know when you're in this mood what you need like before you can ever ask me for something i'm already on it i mean he's spoiled and you know when i talk to my girlfriends about it, they're always like oh how are you guys doing and i'm just like girl he's rotten I'm like, he's spoiled rotten. Like, he's rotten. But I love that. Like, I want him to be that. I think my biggest flex is how I treat my man. And I've been known to love people back to health. And sometimes it's very draining. But my love is my superpower. And I used to hate that about myself. But now it's like, I'm just embracing it. Like, that's who I am. Like, if I love you, I can heal you. It's your joy. It is my joy. You know, I, I love to see him eating a meal that I cooked. I love seeing him sleep easy. Every night, like clockwork, I scratch this man's back to sleep. And I know when he's asleep because I can tell when his breathing changes. And some people might think that's psychotic, but that's like, I just know that's when I'm like, oh, I can stop now. But I find joy in being your rest. No, this is not the entire video. Um, and nor did I watch the entire video because I feel like this particular part of the interview is what stuck out to most. That is why this particular portion of the interview has gone viral. Now, once, like I said in the beginning of the video, we know that the word submissive is somewhat of a trigger word for a lot of women. Um, me specifically speaking, black women, and, um, and I can speak on it because I am one okay and i just listened to it yesterday on a different podcast where they were discussing this same exact topic and all the while that they that that they let the the video that you just saw play all i heard was codependency 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 nurse 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 my whole take of it is and it may be, and I'm pretty sure it is, unpopular to what everybody else says or what culture says, but that's what I'm supposed to do. That's how I'm, that, that, that's what I feel like I need to get off my chest. You're not being submissive to a boyfriend. You're not being submissive to a boo or a bae. You are submissive to a husband, period. Period. Everybody can make it seem like, you know, all of these super long-term relationships and being submissive is this and being submissive is that. But I'm letting y'all know right here and right now, you're not submissive to a boyfriend. You're not submissive to a boo or a bae or situationship, a bond. None of that. You are only submissive or supposed to be submissive to a husband i have seen so many posts even before this video came out and went viral about men wanting submissive women and all of this stuff not even realizing that the man has to be submissive to god first first and foremost that way a woman is going to be able to trust his leadership and come up under his leadership that is what submissive means and 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 be able to trust like i said trust his leadership in the marriage this is no way shape or form a word that is supposed to be thrown out there to make women feel less than a man 
this is not supposed to be something thrown around to make a man feel like the woman is supposed to cater to him hand and foot and do whatever it is that he wants to do and he's the boss of her as if she doesn't have her own mind submissive is literally in the biblical term it is to come up under leadership and this is something that i've learned from my experience of taking the time to study taking the time to be under leadership of some trusted um bible scholars and pastors that i know the the way that it's supposed to be broken down the way that it ha it is 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 it's supposed to be that a man submits to god it allows God to become the Lord over his life or Jesus to become the Lord over his life seeking him in all that he does he works on himself then he is you know he, he he's working on himself he walks in his purpose and he's he, he's living his life for Jesus and pursuing his passions and his dreams and then along comes a helpmate the woman who also has been working on herself, healing from up some stuff, and walking in her purpose, and living out her dreams and her passions, and they come together for one purpose, which is to be married, to allow their marriage to be like a stage, or to be like a, um, a billboard of God's love, and to be fruitful and multiply. And a lot of times, we don't see that in our homes growing up. We don't see that in the world today because everybody is so okay with just being long-term boyfriends, long-term girlfriends, or just being single and using singleness as a reason to be out here like bumping and grinding with everybody else and not taking your singleness seriously as to, um, you know, working on yourself and healing and seeking after God and, and, and living and working in your purpose. Now that is the kingdom way, which is the only way. But I, speaking from experience, I, like I said, I see so many people throwing this submissive word around as if it's a, a word of control. That is nowhere near what it is. Nor do I think that that is something that um, the way in which God wants us to view it. And again, I'm not submitting to nobody who is not committed to me. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to submit to a man that is not making me his wife. Like, and, and if a man is not submitted to God and not allowing God to lead and he take the backseat and he's following God's way, how am I to trust that you can lead me? How am I to trust that you can cover me? And in this entire interview, like I said, I kept hearing codependency, codependency, codependency. I kept hearing nurse, nurse, nurse. And I sympathize and I can empathize with her for the simple fact that I was once that person. But thank God that I broke free from those chains. I, to me, everything that she was saying, like everything that she does for him, like um, packing his clothes, unpacking his clothes, rubbing his back till he falls asleep um knowing his needs before he even says it all of those things you know it's nice all of those things are done you know some that that's ways that people show love by you know like um taking care of somebody or you know just and, and knowing their moods and the things that make them unhappy or when they're in certain moods what to do what not to do like those things are okay to a certain extent because if you are not getting those things done for you then why are you doing those things for people? And a lot of people in the comments and a lot of people in the podcast comments yesterday that I was watching was basically saying that um, that the, the one part that stuck out to them was the fact that she said it is draining. And when you say that out loud, I don't think a lot, a lot of people have, have, have like skated past that part. It's draining because you're not being filled. It's not what you are giving, you're not getting back in return. A lot of men of high stat status, um, a lot of men who think that they, they don't stink, a lot of men who feel like they are in power or just want to be in control in some type of way, feel as though that's what a woman is supposed to do. Bow down to me, be my, you know, my, my, um, uh, be the person that does every single thing that I want you to do and when it comes to you I'm, I'm, I'm not giving that back that's why it's draining sis and 
I like I said, I was that person. I wanted uh, the codependent me, which I didn't even notice that I was until my breakup. I, I felt as though I made someone else my purpose. I felt though that I, because I have a fixer mentality or I had a fixer mentality that pe me needing to help someone, me needing to, to take care of someone, a grown man at that, me needing to um, be that emotional, um, that emotional like person to lean on for everybody or even sometimes making it, being an emotional punching bag and being like, oh, that's just them and accepting it. I, it was draining. I felt myself feeling empty i lost myself in that way because again i'm making someone else a priority and i'm and i'm not making me a priority and that is what was screaming like screaming out of this and it's just like when is it when when do we realize it is it like because if, if it's like she said this is something that she has done and that in her love life forever and, and you know and it's just like once we are really taking the time to know ourselves and and like i said at the beginning like seeking god we understand that we are not anybody's rest is something that she said as well that she's some she finds joy in being someone else's rest honey you are you are not the messiah you are not anybody's rest nobody makes you complete you don't make anybody else complete you are whole you are complete through jesus that's one thing that people need to realize secondly you always being the available one you always being johnny on the spot you always giving and giving and giving and then not um getting anything poured back into you causes you to feel exhausted always trying to um change who you are to be things for for different people makes you feel empty on the inside and makes you forget who you were what you used to, what you like to do what your passions were like what gifts you have because you're so used to just giving to everybody else and making sure that they're getting the things that they need and you're not watering yourself you playing all these seasons and everybody else and then you're feeling depleted it's because you are doing the most and as a woman as a black woman as someone who is growing and someone who is in the journey of, of healing and, and taking my power back like i i feel for her i feel for anybody like that because i the light bulb has went off in my head i realized two years ago that that is something that is not healthy that is something that is very 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 um i don't really want to say toxic but for the lack of better words i'm going to say that's a toxic toxic mentality to have because you're you you are expecting people to one always need you so then when they don't need you anymore you feel less than codependency is when like i said you feel like you want to have somebody to take care of you want to be the fixer you need somebody to need you and then once these these people get what they need or get what they want then and, and then they leave you then you feel like i'm nothing that's why i said nobody no man no woman on this earth should be your all to where if anything happens and they leave you you feel like you can't go on. I felt that way. I, I'm telling you, I felt that way. Like, what do I do now? How do I do this? How do I do that? I was so, like, caught up in trying to make sure that everything with this person was straight. Trying to make sure that everything that I did made them happy. That I was sacrificing my own happiness. I was sacrificing my own mental health. Even though I knew at times, which I'm pretty sure, or I'm assuming that she does, at times it does not, oh, it does not feel good to put you on the back burner. It does not feel good to say that you are doing everything and it's draining like sis what what do you not understand the the wrong in what you just said and i feel like so many people have skated past the part that she said you're not anybody's joy and if it's draining you if this is something that you get you that that exhausts you of who you really are then it's time for you to cut the cord 
these men and these women are adults they can figure it out on the on their own now this is no way shape or form saying that you can't love somebody that you can't be there for somebody but when you're always the one that is is putting you on the back burner just to fulfill the needs and the and, and things of other people what are you what is that saying and like i said that's not being submissive that's being silly that's being dumb if, if if you really want to say it and i and and for those who can relate to this just like i can i was dumb and i can say that i can raise my hand and say i was dumb for that i i literally lost myself in trying to please someone else i felt like if this person left me i could not go on that is codependency and then on the flip side for who her man is what does that say about him because it's just like a lot of people also wanted to know okay if she's doing all this for him what is she getting in return and nine times out of ten just by um some of the things that i've seen or heard about his personality she's not getting anything and if she's okay with that then that's something that she has to deal with and nobody can change it but at the end of the day why would you accept that why would you accept the bare minimum or the minimum at all and you're trying to be this person's mama at the end of the day that's what it sounds like like he's a whole man child out here who needs his ego stroke and who has feels like he has all this money and all this power and status to where he's looking down on you and you better do this or you better do this or i'm gonna take from you no no and she's just like you know i get joy out of this now that's a that's a tricky topic for me because i do love the fact that i can make someone happy by maybe buying them a gift or cooking them a meal or giving them money or doing something like that to make put a smile on their face but to say that they get that you that you that you are someone's joy no you're not and it's just um like just see i'm i was just listening to that the other day and i was like this is so wrong this is not how any of it works this is not how any of it works and if we are not like teaching people the right way we're gonna have so many folks out here thinking that this is what love is and it's not it really is not if i'm giving if i am putting my everything into a situation or into a relationship and i'm not getting anything in return nine times out of ten if if i'm all the way if i'm all the way together myself i'm going to be able to easily discern the red flags and be like i'm it's it's, it's later for you dude it's later for you miss because you're not going to do anything but slow me down you're not going to do anything but try to take me back to where i've already came from i'm not nobody's mama i'm not anybody's nurse and like i said we as women a lot of times we want to be the ones that fix we want to be the ones to be like yeah like i can i can love you so much but as i've learned and as i've been taught um one of my favorite pastors has said you can't love nobody or love them enough or and make them look at you any type of way or appreciate you like more than they already don't like you can't love somebody to 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 into loving you they already don't and if you continuously like i said putting yourself out there you're continuously doing all of these things to like to like show like i care i care i care you always they know you know a lot of people play on that a lot of people played on the fact that I, I cared about them. A lot of people played on the fact that I have a big heart and I would do anything. I, even if you if you do something to me, like one of my, my, my best friends told me the other day, like an uh, ex that I had, like the fact that I was able to forgive, the fact that I was able to have a conversation, the fact that I was able to be face to face with this same person that hurt me and, you know, done did some horrible things to me. Like she was like, you have a big heart. And she was like, you a good one. And I used to feel like I have a big heart. And I used to expect people to do those the same things that I do for them, for me. But then at the end of the day, when it's my turn to get the love, to get the reciprocity, they're like deuces. Or they're like, oh, I I'm going to give you a little bit, but not a lot. And then I see that they go on and, and just give it to everybody else. And I just be like, 
what's wrong with me? At the end of the day, I'm here to tell you right now, there's nothing wrong with you. It's everything that's wrong with them and their heart. I have a video about checking your heart. Because this is all what it boils down to. If we don't do the work for ourselves and we keep on looking to culture to tell us what this is and what love is and what relationships are supposed to be and what marriage is supposed to be and we're not taking the time to study and show ourselves and prove to know what God says it is, how he defines it, and go by God's definition instead of culture and the world's definition and social media's definition, we all going to continue to be screwed up. We all going to be talking out the side of our mouth and then have people looking at us like, What? Submissive, like I said, is not should not be a trigger word. Submissive should be something that is understood through the lenses and the perspective of faith and through and through kingdom. It's not a controlling attitude or mentality to have. It's not a power word. Like I said before, submissive is to come under leadership. And if these dudes out here, these women out here ain't being led by God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son then they ain't being led by nobody but the world and the culture. And that and being that's going to lead you to the wrong place. That's why it's important, like I said before, I mentioned it, in your singleness that you're doing the work. That you're not using your singleness as an excuse to go out here and lay down with every Tom and Harry and Takesha. We need to do the work to know who we are and how we were created to be so that we will understand the right way and be able to counteract that when the world comes at us to tell us what these things are. Because it's so messed up and it's so deep. And again, like I, I think I said it to somebody I was talking to not too long ago. Once I rededicated my life to Christ, like I literally... It felt like I was like outside of my body looking down at me uh, at the world and looking like dang this whole entire time We have been doing it wrong this whole entire time. I've been doing it wrong That's what it means to be able to see through through the eyes Of Christ see like see like Christ like a, It was just like an awakening a revelation a like a light like I said the light bulb that went off and was like Oh, no, this is wrong and a lot of people will not understand that a lot of people will probably say like girl You do too much. You don't even know what you're talking about. You ain't even married da, 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 da. But I know like I said before that I'm a relatable witness and I have a, a incredible testimony when it comes to relationships From two relationships that was hella hella toxic hella hella toxic and I literally, like I said, I was that, I was that watch Jazzy chick. Because like I said, a lot of people was also saying that she's one way in her videos. And then now she's talking about what she, how she do for a man. But then in another video, she's talking about them type of women are a pick me. That do everything for a man. Trying to be there for a man. Like do, do every single thing and he still don't want you. It's like, which, which side you going to choose? But I hope that, like I said, you're understanding. And I'm probably going to do a story time about it. Because codependency is so real. And I didn't even know what that was. But I always felt the need to be needed. I always felt like I needed to take care of somebody. And that because I love this person so much, I'm supposed to go through drama. I'm supposed to go through trauma because once they see that I'm here and I'll never leave and I'll do whatever it takes, that they'll understand and they'll see like, oh my God, it's her. It's been her all along. Like I've always wanted to be chosen. That I wanted to be the chosen one. But I had to realize that is not... That ain't love. That is not love at all. That's that's toxicity. That is dysfunction. That's crazy. Hella crazy. And I can only I can only thank God for allowing, like I said, um, renewing my mind and transforming how I was thinking because I was stuck in this this pattern. She she's me in an interview. I'm 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 I'm. I'm washing his clothes i'm 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 
rubbing his back till he falls asleep. I know his breathing patterns. I, I pack everything. I move out the way when he's mad. I don't I, I don't say nothing to him when he's mad because I'm just gonna sit in it and allow him to be messed up for the rest of his life. Then honey, you don't care about him if you're gonna continue to let him be messed up and crazy and feel like you can't talk to him. And if you can't talk to him and, and without him going off, he don't need to be around you anyway. You know what I mean? Like that's how I am now. That's that's the type of time I'm on. I'm not sitting around pouring and pouring and pouring and then feeling depleted because I don't know who I am anymore. And then feeling like the only the only value that I have is by giving and, and, and feeling validated by people. People going to fail you every time. People is not who I need to look to for my validation and my source of, of hope and, and my joy or my happiness. Because happiness is when things are happening. So when things stop happening, I'm not going to be happy no more. And I'm going to leave all of that control and power to a, a person, an imperfect person. Yeah, yeah, no, not anymore. So to all the, the people who are saying, you know, like she's right, she's right. I'm here to let you know that's not what submissive is, y'all. And like I said, you can say I'm not married, honey. I'm a wife before I'm a wife. I'm a bride of Christ and I'm under his leadership. I obey him. I'm some, I'm, I'm, I don't even want to say obey because I said that it wasn't about control, but it is when it comes to Christ, I'm obeying the things of, of Christ that he tells me to do so that in my life, I can be safe. I can be secure and I can be able to, to, to discern the people that he is sending my way and discern the people that the enemy is sending my way so that I won't be caught up and confused and go back into a cycle of codependency and nursing a man. Like, no, it's okay to nurture. And that's a difference too. And I'm learning this as well. Nurturing and nursing is two different things. Nursing is like you're trying to do everything to heal this person. You're trying to do everything to make this person feel better like, like a nurse would do. No. you These people got to do the work on their own. I'm no healer. I keep saying I'm not the Messiah. My, I just hear my cousin's voice telling me that all the time. I got to be in control. I got to heal them. I got I to gotta make sure they okay. I want to be the person that doesn't. No. They have to be able to do that on their own. Now, nurturing is when you can give advice. You give wise counsel. You can be there to encourage. At times, you may be there to assist. But you're letting this person do the work. And if it don't work, then it's not God's will and it's not what it's meant to be. But if, and if it does, praise God. But do not let, the whole purpose of this video was to let y'all know, don't let culture continue to define and tell y'all the way in which you to live because it's going to lead you to some mess it's going to lead you to some toxic decision making and choices and cycles that you need to be coming up out of and whether you believe in christ or not i'm here to let you know that he is the way the truth and the life and i'm telling you when you submit to him when you come up under his leadership he's going to point show you the right way the right way to think, the right way to be, the right way to act, who to choose, who not to choose to be in your life. Because culture got it all the way wrong. And I know that there was a mention of, you know, a lot of times the, the wrong way that we have saw su submission, in, you know, with our mothers, our grandmothers, our great grandmothers, when they, you know, like I said, they lost themselves, their selves in being a mom. They lost themselves as being a, a wife. They allowed the husband to just do whatever they wanted to do. They allowed the husband to just like walk all over them. I, I've seen that in my life growing up. And I used to tell myself, I'm never getting married. But as I said, as time went on, as I did the work for myself, as I allowed God to transform my mind and my thinking, I do want to be married. I do want to be a wife. I know that I'm, that is something that I believe that God it has put on my life because not everybody is called to marriage. And I have to understand that as well. But the way which granny and grandpa and papa and all of them was doing stuff, that wasn't the right way either. And I know that put a sour taste in our mouth as far as submission because we always look at it as being in control of someone and not allowing people to be them that is not the right way i don't know the scripture but i know that it's in 
Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, the Gospels. Um, submission is when, like I said before, a husband comes under the leadership of God. And then the wife comes under the leadership of the husband, trusting his relationship with God, knowing that God is leading him to make decisions and choices for their family that will elevate and not depreciate and, and, and like bring them down. But wives also, I mean, husbands are also supposed to love their wives as Christ loves the church, loves their wives as they love themselves. So if a man ain't loving himself, if he's not doing things that are, um, are making, you know, making him grow spiritually and, you know, financially and emotionally, he don't love himself because he's not taking the time to put those things, you know, plant those seeds in him. And allowing God to water him. He don't need to be loving nobody. And same thing for females. I've learned so much about love. I've learned so much over these two years. About the way in which God calls us to be in relationships. That it has truly brightened and enlightened me. To where I counteract culture all the time. And people be looking at me like. Why so deep? Why, why why, so serious? Like, you be going hard. I sure do. Because I was tired of being that person like Watch Jazzy. I was tired of being confused. I was tired of being exhausted. I was tired of being drained. I was tired of being the one that everybody comes to. Everybody love. Everybody feel like I'm the one that got away. But when it's time to make me the wife. When it's time to choose me. They run off and give it to whatever's easy or whoever's easy, whoever's temporary. And I got tired of it. Because I know who I am now. And I'm never going back to that. And I pray that whoever is under this, um, under this, like, confused way of thinking because you so used to scrolling on social media and watching all these videos for other people telling you how to be and what to do and this is what a man should do please go to God first and if you don't know him get to know him find someone that you know life is like represented that, that find someone that you know life represents the fact that they have fruits of the spirit that they are in a true relationship and not just religion and rules of God. Find them people and allow them and, and, and sit and talk with them people. Allow them to um, allow them to disciple you, to teach you, to show you. Because if they just talking there, but their lives are not, you know, going, you know, are not are not their their lives are not depicting it, then then them ain't the right people for you to talk to. And I'm one of them. I can talk about it all day. I got journals and books and, and notes all day. I can refer you to, to sermons and podcasts. People who going to give you the real, real biblically. But this whole submission, y'all, y'all got it all wrong. Y'all got it all wrong. But it's okay because I'm praying that we'll get it right sooner rather than later. Thank y'all for watching. Peace.